So what we're going to do now is to set up your machine to program in Java and we're going to use the Eclipse integrated development environment. So uh, we can go directly to eclipse.org and you'll see that there is a place to begin a download. So Eclipse has in it a Java compiler so we don't need to go and get a Java developers kit. The JDK, if the compiler that comes with Eclipse is good enough for you, and it is. So um, we will just go directly to download and unzip the Eclipse integrated development environment. The most recent version of Eclipse is what we will go for. And there's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of them. And we are going to pick Eclipse for Java developers. You don't need the Enterprise Edition. That's um, the JEE stuff. What used to be called J2EE. But we're going to get the Eclipse IDE for Java developers, and I'm doing it in Windows 64-bit. There are also versions of Eclipse for um, Macintosh and Linux systems, and they work very, very much the same, which makes this very convenient. So I'm going to go and I'm going to ask for the 64-bit one, and then you pick the one that's closest to you and it will be faster if you pick a nearby one. So I'm going to go to the University of Florida and I'm going to save that. Eclipse doesn't come as an EXE and, and there isn't an install process for Eclipse. You just go and get it and it's a zip file and you unzip it. Uh, I'm going to drop it on my desktop so I'll be able to find it. The current version of Eclipse uh, is called Juno. So every version of Eclipse has a name that's the next letter in the alphabet. So we had Indigo was the one before. Helios was the H one. So once you have this file downloaded the Eclipse zip file. Where you drop this is where um, Eclipse will be installed in double quotes. There is no install. So if I if I double click on this, now what do I have to do? I'm going to just extract all. And it is saying to me, select a destination and extract files. Okay, well, let's put it in my documents. And it will make a new folder for us if we say put it in um, documents. Two thousand and twelve items. Once you unzip the Eclipse uh, zip file that we downloaded, you get um, a directory called Eclipse when you unzip it. And because it's not a normal Windows install, you don't get icons added to your desktop and your Windows thing. This is the actual Eclipse EXE. So to run Eclipse, you run that. And what we need to do is to make a not a copy of that, but a shortcut to that. So let's create a shortcut. And my shortcuts include the name of the Eclipse that we're using. So I'm going to say that this is Eclipse Juno and it's the 64. So there's a whole bunch of them and I only want to work with one at a time because I'll, I'll get mixed up. So I'm going to copy that shortcut and put it on my start menu or my desktop or wherever you like to have those so that you can find them. Now, let's double click on the shortcut that we created and it will launch 
eclipse Juno. So when you start using Eclipse, the first thing that will happen is that it will say, What's, what workspace do you want to work in? And the workspace is where you keep all of your Java programs. It's just a folder, and it will make a default one for you called Workspace. And we can use that as the default one and not have to ask this every time. Once you get like you've got a lot of Java projects all over the place, you're going to have lots of different workspaces, and you can switch workspaces once we get in there. So once it opens up, you get this welcome page, and there are some tutorials and things that you can play with if you want to. What I would like us to do is to make a simple Java program to see if Eclipse is working. The So um, you can close that stuff over there. And I'm going to make a simple Java project. I'll call it the first project. And I don't type well all the time. Well, I'm not using Git, so I'm not going to um, be warned that I it can't find Git every time. Oh, the home is not set. This is another Git thing. Git is a source control which is becoming very popular now and it's integrated in with um, Eclipse automatically so we can ignore all of that. Here's our source folder in the project and we're going to add a class the name of a class in Java always starts with a capital letter and we're going to click on this because we're too lazy to type it ourselves. It will put in a, a main method. And here's what it does. I'm going to throw these comments away. And inside of the main method, SYSO control space, it will type system.out.println for you. There's a bunch of little shortcuts like that. So here's the hello world message that we will send as proof that this Java project is running. So here's the play button. Um, always save the resources before launching. Um, it just makes sense. If you've changed your code, you want to save it and run the new version. And here's the console window that automatically appears down at the bottom. So what we know for sure, we have Eclipse installed and it's working to make a Java program.